Hello and welcome to LetMeBoreYouToSleep.com My name is Jason Newland, this is Let Me Bore You To Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And here's a weather warning. There is thunder outside and it's raining very hard. But there's thunder, so if you have any issues with thunder, then please switch the off button and go and uh, maybe listen to a a different recording. Um, Because I know it's not everyone's uh, favourite thing. I love it, but, you know, I (laughs) I think ironically, or not ironically, maybe coincidentally, the last recording I made actually had a thunderstorm as well because I haven't made a recording for probably about a week so I've been busy making websites so just to let you know my new websites are remade old websites if that makes any sense so I've got this one, let me bore you to sleep.com. I've got deep sleep whisper.com. That's for the deep sleep whisper hypnosis uh, podcast. There's sleep hypnosis weekly.com, which is for the sleep hypnosis weekly podcast. I have free sleep hypnosis.com which is for the Hypnosis for Sleeping Deeply podcast. And the last one is freehypnosismp3s.com, which is all of my stuff. Uh, Not all of the websites are full and fully built, Um, but most of them are there's still quite a bit of work to do but I came to the I don't know that conclusion or realisation or thought, I had a thought that actually if I waited until those websites were built it would be another week or maybe two weeks before I got round to making a new recording which defeats the kind of whole point in what I'm doing because making recordings is more important than the websites so there you go here I am I'm back and uh, before I go any further I'd like to thank Susan who's just uh, given me a donation Susan lives in Canada and I uh, just want to thank you for your kind donation, and that will help to pay for this podcast. Because um, I've got quite a few things I pay out for monthly regarding providing this free hypnosis service. There's there's the internet. Admittedly, it could be an argument of like, well, you'd have the internet anyway, wouldn't you, JJ? You know, and mm, kind of probably would want it, yeah. So it's kind of, but I wouldn't necessarily need the full one that I've got. Because one I've got is like super fast, broadband, unlimited, £30 a month thing. I wouldn't need that if I wasn't working on websites and all this stuff. So I could probably, I'd probably pay less for the internet. But the other things that cost 
and money is the Spreaker podcast host, which is the that's where all of my podcasts are housed, and I've got a subscription with them which should be £50 a month but it's got a little bit of a discount at the moment I think they gave me 30% off but I'm not sure how long that lasts for but 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 I have 1,500 hours available on there and I'm now I've got about 17 hours left before I reach that target which means I'm going to have to upgrade which could be take up to about £70 a month or more maybe even £100 a month so I'm going to have to kind of juggle that one I'm not sure what to do there the other things I pay for is the um, the websites so that costs me £33 a month for the five websites that I just mentioned to host those monthly uh, on WordPress and there's the URL the website names they cost me £50 a year so that's £250 a year just for those website names so it all kind of adds up a bit you know um, that's about it I think at the moment that's uh, podcast website internet and that's about you know, the laptop and all the different things I've bought over the years, but that's uh, that's a separate thing. Plus, I think chocolate bars should be included. I need to buy chocolate sometimes. But, uh, yeah, so that's, if you do want to contribute, help out help 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 out it's paypal.me forward slash jason and newland and the link is actually on my website every little helps and it'll just help to pay for the costs and i shall mention you in the podcast if you do i won't mention your surname i'll just call you by your first name just in case you don't want to be, I don't know, what, why wouldn't you want your surname mentioned, but I suppose, just, I just, you know, for privacy purposes, I mean, no one wants to be known as being generous, do they? Ooh, no, ooh, so, what else, what else, what else? Um, yeah if you want to leave a testimonial on the website uh, let me bore you to sleep com just let me know how you're getting on if you like what I do this is a long boring introduction isn't it so if you if you benefit from what I do maybe you can if you go to the website there's a page which is right testimonial just click on that and uh, you can just write something nice and then it will be available for everyone to to read and if you write something horrible it won't be available for everyone to read <laughs> then what would be the point in that um, and you can also
contact me as well via the website. So there's now a contact form on there. Uh, it's a, you know, on in the menu, it's a contact. Contact me. And if you need to contact me for anything or just want to say hello or, you know, so... So I've been working on that, just adding those little little touches to the website. But there's still a, f a fair bit to do on each one. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stress myself over it because <sighs> I feel quite relaxed today. I know I, I shouldn't really feel surprised at that but especially as I you know I'm kind of devoting my life to helping other people to relax and calm down and helping with sleeping and stress and anxiety reduction and you know all that stuff but I just uh I've come to a kind of a conclusion or realisation or acceptance or I don't know what the right word would be but I think I'm doing the right thing you know it might seem like a strange thing to say but I feel like I'm on the right path I've kind of, you know, it's, I was watching this documentary on YouTube, and I like, I'm a big fan of Warren Buffet. I know it's pronounced Buffett, but I like Buffet. Warren, Warren Buffet. One of the richest men in the world, richest people in the world. It's like 78 billion or something. But he's so down to earth, he's very funny. And his philosophy is really just to find something that you love doing and then do that as a job and do whatever you need to do to get to that position where you're doing what you love doing. and to find something that you're good at, I suppose. But something that you enjoy, that you, and it, it's kind of the consensus with pretty much every motivational speaker. So I, I watch a lot of them, I have been since 1998, no, 97. It was about September, October time. 97, 1997 that I started listening to motivational talks and tapes you know from people like Anthony Robbins and Zig Ziglar and I'm trying to think various different people you know feel the fear and do it anyway and um What was another one? The Alchemist. And is it Ken Livingston Seagull? It's another one. So I, I used to buy these tapes and listen to them while I was working. And because uh, I used to like be cleaning and doing stuff. So, you know, I didn't have to, I didn't need my ears, if that made sense. I was, I was able to do what I was doing while I was listening because I know I tell other people don't listen to these recordings unless you can safely close your eyes but I would never have listened to a sleep session or a hypnosis -y kind of stuff um, while I was working here's a little bit of information that you don't know about me when I stopped smoking in 2000, that was 1999, December, and I was very ill, 
just just like a really bad cold and I couldn't smoke if I wanted to I just couldn't you know so that's quite a good time to stop and uh, I after I felt better because I was uh, the I felt ill for about a week or something and then I got you know the cold got better and I was alright and then I kind of had that little urge to smoke again but I decided I wasn't going to smoke anymore and as well as using self hypnosis and I remember exactly the kind of stuff I was saying to myself but it was real like uh, mind bending stuff that I was like testing out it's kind of weird really um but it was because I was very uh, what's the right word is it studious I don't know very very into reading hypnosis books back then like proper you know sort of technical textbooks on the subject and really into like uh, some of the complicated language structures that I try to incorporate into my own self-hypnosis which was a bit weird very trancy uh, found it very difficult as well to do it to myself because uh, it's kind of like a paradox kind of situation um, if it's very simple simple words simple sentences that's easier but if you try and do like these language things it's kind of I don't know it was a bit weird but it helped I think but another thing that helped was this audio that I had which I listened to every single morning and it was a meditation a guided meditation and there was this lady talking this music beautiful music and she was American beautiful voice really soft lovely voice and I would run the bath turn the bath water on the hot taps and this audio lasted for about 20 minutes and that's how long it took for the bath to fill and I just got so relaxed it just relaxed me so it's, it got to the point where I just started listening and straight away I was zonked out And that really helped me. And I think maybe in a kind of a subtle way that that stuck with me. And maybe is part of the reason why I ended up um what, six years later, doing these, starting doing these things in 2006. But it was, it was something about, I liked the repetition. However, I think I would have quite liked to have listened to her saying something different but to still be her voice you know so I think I've tried to make each recording that I do you know along the way kind of stand alone but also there's the 
kind of like a continuation, although not. This makes no sense, does it? I'm ever so pleased with myself. If I can make the least amount of sense possible, then I'm happy. It gives me a little thrill. Gives me a thrill in a willy. So, those of you that are still listening, that are still kind of awake and just listening to me thinking uh, here he goes again I'd like to thank you for listening because you give my life meaning so thank you and I don't like to say nice things to people I try to avoid it if I can I try to avoid being nice but I genuinely doing this having an audience that listen some people let me know that what I do is useful and helps I don't get a huge amount of feedback but I have had I suppose over the years lots of feedback but not it's not like it's streaming in continuously, which would be nice. So maybe we can start doing that together. Give me feedback, let me know, and maybe do it on the website. And if you do that, I'll keep the website going forever and ever. But it is nice to, it feels quite nice to feel kind of like I'm sharing something. Sharing something. I don't know what, but something. Maybe an energy. Maybe, because even though, you know, this is just me talking and being boring. It's supposed to be boring. So, I think I succeed in that every single time. You know, I've, it is boring. I mean, no one can deny that. So, and that's a good thing because I always wanted to be good at something. Uh, you know, some kids, they want to go and become an astronaut or want to be a train driver or a surgeon or, you know, become a firefighter. I wanted to bore people. I really, no, I didn't. I actually wanted to be a policeman. When I was probably about... How old was I? Help me out here. How old was I? Probably about 10. 10 years old. And I wanted to be a policeman. But in those days, there was a height restriction for police. A policeman, you had to be, I don't know, six foot, maybe five ten, five eleven, six, something like that, minimum. And females, I suppose it was shorter than that, I guess. It is a guess. But now, I've seen police men who came up to my knees. You know, it's very short. So, you know, if I'd have been born 30 years later, perhaps I could have been a, a police person. And I've got a cousin who's in the police. 
and it was really weird because I didn't see him for years and years and years and then we got in contact on Facebook and we used to be really close you know he was more like a brother to me um, back in the late 90s we were very very close and he was a lot younger I think he was probably about 18 yeah he was about 18 in 1998 19, 20 so he was like late teens early 20s and we was like hanging out and I was about 10 years older I suppose and he was like Anyway, I didn't see him for absolutely years. He's the one that got me into web design. Because uh, he was learning HTML and I just, for some reason, got the bug. You're like, oh, HTML. And for those that don't know what HTML is, it's, it's what websites were built with. It's the code how websites used to be built. It used to be HTML, HTM, hyperlink, whatever. Um, and then it became HTML. And then, you know, people started using Flash and, oh, and it's, you know, I kind of lost I lost the uh, I became out of out of date with it if that makes sense because I kind of lost interest although I can still read the source of a website so that's quite good if I want to find out something in a web page I can go to the source and I can find it, and I can see the structure, and I can kind of, not always, because a lot of stuff is hidden, but, you know, things like changing the colour of the text, and the font, and, you know, stuff like that. Which, I've got no reason to do, but, because sometimes, my name comes up in a search in Google, and a website comes up. But in the search, it says Jason Newland, free hypnosis, uh, boring sleep, whatever. So I click on the website thinking, oh, there must be, I've added a link to the website to my, to me, which is nice. But then I go to the website and there's nothing about me on there at all. So I go into the source code of the website to try and find out if I'm there. And sometimes I'm not. Sometimes, in the past, I've found that they've used me as keywords. Now that's funny. They've actually used my name as keywords, as tags, whatever you want to call it, in order to gain traffic how weird is that so I guess there's a couple of people out there that seem to think that I have some value <laughs> I wish using my name would help my websites Yeah, I had a weird situation today. I took Andre out for a walk. It was a standard thing, you know, it wasn't like a weird, a weird situation. To start with, and because we'd been, like the weather forecast was supposed to be thundery and rainy and all that stuff, all that groovy stuff I thought you know what it's been a nice day it was overcast but I thought I'll wear me 
I will wear me shorts and a t-shirt and I don't know why but I'm feeling a little bit more body confident at the moment um, I think I've slimmed down a little bit although I haven't really lost much weight so it's a bit weird I just I can feel my stomach the muscles in my stomach a lot more kind of more muscular if that <laughs> might sound weird but and I mean you know I've been uh, doing a bit of weights and stuff but I'm still 98 kilos so I think it works out 116 pounds something like that no 200, 216 pounds or 15 and a quarter stone and so I thought I don't know why but I thought I'm going to wear my shorts because I've got quite nice legs not nice as in ooh but you know if you saw me you wouldn't want to paint them you wouldn't want to say wait a minute let me get my easel get my easel out I want to paint your legs just leave your legs there come back tomorrow it's, it's not that you know it's not they're not captivating but they're quite slim I'm, quite, I'm kind of more upper body I'm kind of top heavy very busty <laughs> I'm top heavy my legs are just kind of they're not little I haven't got like matchstick legs you know I don't struggle to, to walk they're defined they are strong enough they should be holding the weight I've got but it is more upper body for me so I wore my shorts because I like to like you know let's let people see that I've got my legs are alright I'm not just this walking blob although as I'm walking now I think my thighs are rubbing together so maybe after saying that maybe I'm not quite as my legs aren't quite as amazing as I thought but they're still pretty good they're still okay and as I go outside I've got a t-shirt on and my shorts and Andre's asleep so I pick him up and I carry him I put the lead on him and I just carry him and I do that until he's awake and he wants to get down I just carry him and we go around the block into the field area and he's happy enough he's licking my hand just looking around he seems happy and eventually he gets down and he walks and I walk him and everything's going absolutely fine I go all the way around and then we get into the park again everything's absolutely fine and we get further into the park and then there's a dog running towards us so I, I'm just standing there with Andre and he's just standing there I'm not looking at him and um, and I'm standing there probably for about 30 seconds I'm not sure if the dog's going to run towards me or not and eventually it did so I pick Andre up hold him and just walk around the corner a bit further into the park until the dog's like moved away and I put Andre down and it looks like I've got melted chocolate all over my hand my right hand or is it my left hand it's one of my hands anyway and I can't figure out what on earth is that 
so I think oh it's Andre and I realised I must have picked him up he must have been doing a poo and he only ever does that when I wake him up and take him out other than that he doesn't go outside he doesn't like doing it outside but you know he hasn't had if when he hassles me to go out it means he's already been in he's already done gone to the toilet indoors and he wants me to take him out and enjoy himself because he's got <laughs> energy he's a bit lighter isn't he but uh, on this occasion because I didn't wake him up I just took him out he went and I didn't realise he was going to the toilet so initially I thought he's just been and it was a bit uh, until so I washed I wiped my hand on the grass and then then I put him down and then my hands dirty again I'm like why and I looked down and all over the side of my I don't want to go into details but what was on my hand was all over my shirt my t-shirt my white very very white t-shirt all on the left hand side of me down my shorts and also on my trainers on my shoes on my left shoe luckily I wasn't far from home if I'd have been in town I don't know what I'd have done I'd have had to go to a um, to a charity shop and try to get a, a t-shirt or something from them so I'm not walking around topless no it's bad enough got me got me sports bra on I don't want people seeing it and so I get, I get home I'm trying to kind of rush in hoping not that I don't see anybody any neighbours or anybody because I've got all this Andre's you know done a little dirty protest all over me and I get indoors I just let him run around to, you know just and I take the t-shirt off really carefully and that goes in the bin because nothing I can do with that it's, it's ruined and it wasn't just an ordinary t-shirt it was an actual one that I bought not like a cheap t-shirt this was actually a how shall I explain it wasn't a, like a cheap pack of three t-shirts it was like one that I bought on its own that probably didn't cost much but still didn't want to chuck it away it was more of a top than a t-shirt and I liked it because I didn't I didn't it didn't um didn't have arrows pointing to my belly which a lot of t-shirts seem to have but this kind of was just more just loose you know and then that's when I realised it's all over my, my uh, shorts as well but luckily it wasn't much so I managed to get a lot of that out and that's what I'm going to put that in the wash and I had to wash my shoe I was just like and of course my hands I, start, I just couldn't believe it it's never happened it's never I don't think it's ever happened the whole time I've had him it's that happened and it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't picked him up Yeah. Uh, oh, I got my. Uh, I 
got my carpet cleaner and I cleaned two parts of the carpet and Andre wouldn't go near those parts of the carpet you know even with paper on them but now he is so I kind of had to retrain him but I got this it's a fax the, the VAX the carpet cleaner and the liquid that it came with was let me read it here it's called Vax Platinum Professional Solution and it's tiny it's I'm literally it, I can hold it in my hand my hand my fingers can't wrap all the way around it but so by the looks of this but you know pretty much I've got it in my hand if you could imagine holding something in your hand um, that just fits in your hand as opposed to something that doesn't like a proper sized bottle of solution which would be like a litre or two litres which is what I needed to clean this flat And I go back on the website, they don't even sell that solution on the website that I bought the cleaner from. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, I'm going to probably next week, or this week maybe, get some solution in town. And then I'm going to start doing more of the carpet. But doing the bits that Andre doesn't go near anyway. So it won't affect him. And just get the rest of the carpet done bit by bit. So it's going to take... I mean for one machine load of water with a solution. I can do... So now look, one, two, three, four, five, five foot, five foot by five foot. See, I don't want to say five foot square because that might not be right. But five foot across, five foot the other way across. Or five foot wide and five foot length. And that's five feet of my feet which is a size 10, so, so whatever that is. And that's all I got out of one machine. But saying that, the reality is I had to go over it twice on that particular part. So I had two machine loads just for one patch. Um, but other parts I won't have to go over it twice probably but then I might do that's the thing because this carpet there's even bits just where he's been eating and he's like got food gone on the floor and he's you know there's bits where he's had an egg like over in the entrance to the kitchen there's a big white stain and it's basically where he's had an egg and he's the egg's gone all over the carpet and he's eating the egg but then the egg has stained the carpet so if you ever want to bleach your hair and you haven't got any bleach try an egg or not obviously I'm not responsible for what happens but an egg that might bleach your hair 
course don't do it if you've got egg allergies but then you wouldn't would you you wouldn't go anywhere near an egg oh sorry my microphone's going all over the place I'm wearing my dressing gown and it's just come open and it's a bit chilly it's a little bit chilly So the the soundproofing that I got in here, the pads. So I got 120, 120 pads, something like that. So they're all on the walls, um, sort of around where my chair is, and all across one wall. Apart from the fact that some of them are starting to peel off the wall <laughs> they are some of them are starting to just gradually push themselves away from the wall for some reason the ones at the bottom near the skirting board are starting to fall apart with the help of a little ferret who's been scratching and biting at them and one is practically he's ripped one off the wall nearly there's one whole bit which he's, t he's ripped off of, of, a, of one of the slabs another bit he's completely scratched the bits and another one so one, two, three and then one near the chair and I'm, I'd have to move the chair to see what he's done to the others so he's kind of started to destroy the ones and that's his new hobby, he loves them because he can scratch it, he can bite it and it makes a mess and it's near the chair as well and he loves, I don't know why now at the moment He's loving being under the chair. Normally he goes under there to hide from me. So if we're playing, he knows I can't get to him. Or if he being naughty or whatever, he hides under there. It's because he knows I can't get to him because he's, it's difficult to get to him. So tonight, about an hour and a half, hour and a half ago, I go to put him to bed. He's not behind the chair, behind the the, the, the uh, door, which is where he normally sleeps at the moment. He's not going anywhere near his bag at the moment for some reason. It goes through periods when he doesn't touch the bag. So I go into his bed. I go into my bed rather. He's not in there. So I'm thinking, where is he? Where's he gone? And I look under the chair and he's there, he's just looking at me. As if to say, well, what are you going to do? I'm here, you can't get to me. But I can, but it just takes a bit of effort. So I got him out of there and put him into his cage. And as I was leaving, I just hear him saying, I'll get you back for this. I'll make you, I'll, I'll get you back. <laughs> so vindictive but he seems to like it under that chair so I don't know I sometimes wonder what he's up, what is he up to what's he getting up to but it might be more it's a cool place because the temperature's changing a bit at the moment and I think underneath there is probably quite cool quite shady not that I'm outside, it's, you know, I do have a roof and a ceiling, so it's not like the sun's like shining brightly into the building. Mind you, we're supposed to, apparently, according to the weather forecast, supposed to have potentially the hottest days coming up. Because 
I think in France and Germany they had so I don't know if it was the hottest days ever in the history or just the hottest days for June that they've ever had I don't know but they were had something like 40 42 degrees or 44 degrees which is like 107 or something like that so it's very you know very hot but apparently in England we are due to have some pretty pretty hot 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 weather in the next few days and as well as lots of rain and thunder so it's kind of ooh, make your mind up mate so I can't wear my shorts because they're now in the washing machine awaiting a load because I couldn't I couldn't drop a load earlier because it's too late it's like 8 o'clock at night and it's too late to be having the washing machine going so it wouldn't have been finished till at 10, half nine, 10. It's, it's not fair on the neighbor. So, you know, I have a cut off point. I try not to do, I try not, try not to drop too many, I try not to drop a load at night. Uh, I don't like to disturb my neighbor when I'm dropping a load because, you know, the, the washing machine like really kind of it's the spinning bit, the actual washing machine bit's fine, but it's that bit at the end where it spins and it vibrates. And even sitting on it doesn't stop it from vibrating. But it uh, doesn't stop me doing it. <sighs> so... So, oh, another thing I needed to do. I got myself a shaver, and it came without a plug. It came with like it's electric shaver. It's a really good one as well. But it came with a plug that you can only put into a two what two pin socket thing that. Uh, people sometimes have in bathrooms well I don't have one in my bathroom and none of my neighbours do either because I asked so I I was going to get an adapter like a so you know you plug it in and it another it adapts it into a three pin one which means we plugged into normal and it was going to cost me £6.99 in Argos for two. Now, I didn't realise it was for two. I just thought it was for one. But I was prepared to pay the £6.99. And then I was doing a wee. And I thought to myself, you know what? I wonder if there'll be any cheaper at Wilkinson's. Which is uh, like Wilco's. It's a cheap. Uh, well, it's like cheaper shop, but they do electrical stuff as well, like plugs and light bulbs and stuff like that, as well as milk and toilet roll and you know different things. So I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I use that internet thing and see whether or not they've got one of those. What do they call it? Websites. I said. So I did, and they did. And they did have one of those plugs for two pound, four pound ninety nine cheaper than what I was going to pay at Argos. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do, because I had to go into town on Thursday. So I went in there. And I bought 
a plug. But I didn't just buy the plug, the, 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 the adapter thing. I went in there. I went to go in there after going into, uh, I think I got some milk from the shop before. But the entrance was closed. It was blocked off. And then next to the entrance was an exit, which meant I had to walk all the way around the outside to get to the entrance. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to put my foot down here. And I thought, I'm going to put my next foot down as well. And I just continued walking. And I didn't. I thought, I'm going to be walking into the exit. I'm going to be a rebel. It's about time. It's about time I rebelled against these strict rules, which I didn't agree to. And as I walked closer to the door, it just opened on its own which I think someone had walked past it inside and it walked open and I, I stepped through and I looked around defiantly I said, come on then you want some? you want anyone want some? come get it but no one did so I walked up and got the plug I, just, I said to one of the people working there excuse me can you tell me where the plugs are? And he said yeah there they're next to you, they're just there. I said, Isn't it always a way? He said, I don't know. So I thought I'd just move on from that conversation. And uh, got the plug, two pound, walked up to the cashier section. And they got about 10 different cashiers, and they just read out the number that's available next. Cashier number four go to cashier number six so mine it came up and said go to cashier number ten which was all the other end the other end of the store I had to walk well it's to the last cashier so I had to walk all the way up to the last one and then all the way back to the exit door which is so it was like a big long wasn't a long journey though and as I was walking cashier number four became available so I went on there and she said, what are you doing? I said, uh, you know, I pay here. I can't be bothered to walk all the way up there. Didn't feel a lot of warmth from her. She didn't seem too pleased with me. I could kind of, I got the sense that she won't be sending me a birthday card this year but it seemed like the right thing to do maybe it wasn't it's not as warm as it was so I got my dressing gown on and I've just got my underpants or my boxer shorts and some socks and that's it. I've not got anything else on, so I'm not, you know, I don't normally, normally I walk around, I've got, you know, when I'm at home, I've got a t-shirt on, and uh, tracksuit trousers, at least, and maybe a jumper if it's, you know, the winter. But tonight I've just been chilling out in a been a bit of a very kind of loose environment but I'm, feel, <laughs> I'm feeling that maybe I need to put a t-shirt on and maybe some tracksuit trousers yeah yeah. I 
did some shopping today, which is good because it means I haven't got to go out tomorrow or today. I mean, technically, it's not today yet. It's today if you're awake, but I haven't been asleep yet, so it's still yesterday for me. And I won't be going to bed for probably a couple of hours. So I need to upload these, don't I? And uh, I might make another recording before I go to bed. And then, you know, I've, I started thinking I should sort of plan what I'm going to talk about. Maybe not with these, but with the hypnosis -y stuff. But I just like thinking off the top of my head and just... I enjoy the creativity of it and always coming up with something always always something comes up something something arises always so but I don't know it's like the idea of maybe being a bit more organized Maybe that will happen one day. Maybe when I get to about 2,000 recordings, I might have finally got myself organized. But on that note, I'm gonna go now. So hopefully you've just drifted off and got bored enough to go to sleep. And I will speak to you very soon.